and gentlemen, please welcome our very, very special guest, Mr. James Marsden. Hello. James, welcome. How are you, sir? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Welcome to London. How long, uh, how long often are you in London? How long have you had a chance to kind of look around? I'm, you know, I'm not in London enough. I love this city. I, I came in on Saturday with my son, who's sitting over there. And we had a few days to sort of see the city a bit before we jumped into all the press for the movie and everything. So it's always nice to come here and uh, and hang out. Yeah, hey, well, the weather's good. beautiful. It's it's astounding how, how yeah. Um, don't don't get used to that. <laughs> hey, don't, don't get used to it's that. It's great. I wasn't ready for that. It it won't last. Um, let's talk about the fact that we I kind of mentioned to these guys a moment ago. Your movies define genre. We tried to kind of put you in a in a particular genre is very difficult to do when you kind of look at you know lee daniels the butler uh, to 27 dresses and uh, superman i mean the list goes on and on how do you make those decisions of what movie and when uh i don't know really the misconception is that we get to choose everything that we want to do in this business i i take the scripts that come my way and and within those opportunities i sort of I, I just try to uh, pursue the ones that I feel like I, I belong in, <laughs> I don't know, um, or that just I'm creatively inspired by, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's been, it, initially it wasn't like a plan to, to jump around and do comedy and do drama and do action. It was just like, whatever job that comes my way, I'll take it. You know, it's like, you know, it's like balancing being a creative artist and also paying a mortgage. Yeah, but, of course. Uh, yeah, but later on it's like, all right, you can, when you have the opportunity to, to be judicious about what, you know, the types of roles you take, it's more interesting to me, it's one of the great things about being an actor is, you know, you get to play several different types of people. And does it become part of who's directing a movie as well? Obviously working with Brian Singer quite a few times on X-Men, Superman. Is that important to you? Are you kind of doing a little tick list of who you want to work with because you know I know you're very modest about the way that it works but uh, you know you are in that position that you could choose movie via director or story or yeah I think you know I mean there's always different degrees of um, of, of uh, <laughs> I was gonna say celebrity but that's not the right word but you know like you you have you know I've been doing this for about 20 years and and, and I feel like I've sort of gotten to a place where yes you can you can be decisive about you know, I want to work with that director. I want to work with that actor. This is the script doesn't feel right to me. I'll, I'll I'll pass and I'll wait on something else. But to me, the best directors I think are, are the ones that I, I want to work with. Meaning, people say, who do you want to work with? Actors, actresses. It's to me, it's all about directors. It's about material. It's about the scripts. And then, as an actor, you're so vulnerable uh, on on set. You you can give the the director ten different takes, and he can choose a bad one and put it in the movie. And so you want to believe in your director because you're. You know, that's your safety net, I guess. So to me, it's all about working with the best directors. But, you know, it's funny because <laughs> I guess to say the misconception is like my uncle, I grew up in Oklahoma and they don't, they still don't really know how it all works. And, you know, sometimes they'll say like, you know, you know, Jimmy, you need to be, you need to be in a, in a Scorsese movie like that. That's what you need. So why don't you just call him? And just get in a Scorsese movie. Like, it's not that easy. Yeah, just <laughs> so, hey, I'm a film so, critic and I still it, but I think it works that way, right? Right, yeah, exactly. Just, it oh, that's him. a great idea. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know what you need to do? You need to be nominated for an Oscar. Go, go get nominated for an Oscar. Oh, right, because I hadn't thought of that. That's it. Um, but yeah, with it, so my point is, I guess, within the opportunities that present themselves to you, 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 you know, you, you want to work with the best directors and you want to do scripts that you feel like you're right for it, I guess. Do you not text the family in Oklahoma and go, this movie's come up, I'm doing Lee Daniels is the butler. It's a shoe in I'm, right. It's a guarantee. Buy the champagne, I'm coming home. <laughs> right. They're like, you're John F. Kennedy? <laughs> nah, okay. they messed up on that one. Can we talk about JFK just for a quick second? Because I worked this out yesterday. I don't know whether it means that I need to get out more. Um, but technically, then, you have been killed by a mutant twice as because technically, war, you, you're like, hang on, right? I will get out more, I promise you. Um, so, <laughs> so Magneto technically kills you via Gene in X Men Last Stand. Right. Yeah, I, I and, try to forget that one, but mm, yeah, yeah, we all have. But hey, listen, we'll talk later. Um, kidding. And kidding. Then, and then spoiler: Days of Future Past. Um, Magneto bends the bullet to kill JFK. He's got you twice, buddy. Yeah, Two different has. movies, but you're dead twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has. Um, uh, yeah, I wasn't JFK in that one though. Thank you. <laughs> so I dodged that bullet. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, I keep dying in these X Men movies. So, so. hey, as long as they keep bringing me back, I'm fine. Either way, I promise to get out more now. I will. I will. I will start <laughs> yes. getting life from here. Um, let's talk about the best of me. And first of all, let's talk about uh, your character and and what it was about this character that appealed to you. And we'll, and then we'll get on to kind of maybe a bit more about Nicholas Sparks's work as well. Yeah. Um. You know, to me, it's like I I I finish a comedy, then I want to go do a drama. I do an, an action film, and you, to me, it's just all about changing it up, like you mentioned earlier. So. I just finished uh, a, a pretty irreverent uh, comedy with Jack Black. It was just he and I. And, um, and this script came along, and I was in The Notebook about 10, 12 years ago, and that was a great experience and s continues to set the bar for these types of movies. And this came along. It was a nice opportunity to sort of be the lead guy in, in a movie like this. And um, so that was really it. I wanted to work with Michelle Monaghan, who I think is just, she's one of those rare actresses that are not only beautiful but really talented as well. And... Um, and that was that was it. The, I thought the role was really interesting. It was this guy who just carries a lot of regret about um, some choices he made in his life, and and I think he looks at her as the one who got away, and she's moved on with her life, and and now life has sort of brought them back together twenty years later, and um, you know, and it's always an interesting to think of when we think about our lives about what you know the choices that we make and the roads not taken. You go back to your first love, and you know everybody remembers their first kiss and their first love, and. And you wonder sometimes, what would my life be like, and who would I be if I was still with that person now? Would it be better? Would it be would it be richer? Would it be worse? You know. Um, so that's sort of what the movie's about, and 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 it's probably magnified now more than ever with social media. Like you can, you can immediately go back and get in touch with your high school girlfriend or boyfriend. And it's called yeah. stalking. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked that man. She's with now. You you do need to get out more. Uh, yeah, mate, buddy. <laughs> hey. Seriously, my wife's told me that so many times. Um, but they, this is genuinely true. There's a statistic that 50% of marriages end because of because of that unfulfilled no first love. Oh, yeah, because actually of that. I true. You say social media. No, well, <laughs> I'm guessing that hasn't helped. Uh, I think you said because because of my wife for a second. Um, but so people do go back. People people are obsessed with that first love, and I think that resonates with this movie. I think so. I mean, I think you know the, the challenging thing with um, moving on from your first love is that you you know we are, we're always trying to find. Um, those fireworks in our in our adult relationships, but the fact of the matter is, in, in my opinion, is that when you're young and you experience love for the first time, and the, all the dopamine is in your body firing, and you, the endorphins are going, it's you, you're never. It's the first time you've ever experienced those emotions, and it's very real and it's it's very powerful. And then you know you get older and you the, you become more depthful as a human being, and your your experiences with love are, I think, more complicated and more interesting in my opinion um, than just those chemicals firing you know when you, you love at first sight all those all those notions and romantic ideas um, but you know I think yeah I think uh, you hang we hang on those a little too long sometimes we think like all right, that was real love and you know and and maybe for some it was that was the case I think with this movie the two characters in the film they it, they're one of those rare instances where this this is something very real, and they just want to stay in each other's field of gravity, and and can't imagine living life without one another. But unfortunately, the circumstances have pulled them apart. But now life has sort of given them another opportunity to be together. So it's like, what do you do with that? You know, I mean, it, it, getting into the character of Dawson as well. There's a moment in the film where you feel like Dawson is. He's almost trying to, you know, he obviously is still in love with her and, and that's never gone away. But there's a point that is he is he ruining her family life? And it goes in this really interesting character trait. I mean, obviously, we know what we know about her life through watching the movie. And you guys are going to experience that. But there's a there's there's a moment where does Dawson feel that pressure of what am I doing to this woman? I think what what the character that I play in the movie, what he's he's a he's a really good guy. He's um he's kind hearted. He tries to make the right decisions, does not want to. He's not interested in putting any negativity back into the world, and um, and he does recognize the fact that she's married with the kids and um, and all of that. Um, but uh, I think his love for her transcends even them being together to some degree. It's like when you love someone that much, you just you really just want them genuinely to be happy, however that manifests itself in, in whatever shape or form. Um, so he would you know he would not want to wreck that home or go in there just for selfish reasons he just genuinely wants her to be happy he asks her that in the film um and to me that's like the ultimate romantic gesture is uh, you're willing to give up your own happiness and what you want for somebody else 
Um, let's talk about Nicholas Sparks, um, an incredible body of work. And obviously you mentioned the notebook from earlier. Am I right in thinking that you didn't meet him on the notebook? Uh, I did meet him. I met him at the premiere, though. He was never, he was briefly on set. Okay, so yeah. so obviously you didn't have him to fall back on in terms of, of character pieces at that point? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, Nicholas writes the novels and then the screenplays get written and they become their own thing. I mean, sometimes, uh, a lot of times we try to keep as many elements of the book in the screenplay and that's a challenge because you have to keep it at around 110, 120 pages. Um, but but he's he's very supportive. He's He, he loves the fact that these films are getting made and... Um, and he knows that he does have creative control to some degree. He says, all right, we well, can't change too much of it, but you can have a certain amount of creative license to, you know, to make it right for the film, to make it right for cinema. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he's, he just loves being on set, watching it all going. He's the smiliest guy. He comes on set. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he just loves the fact that his book is being made into a movie and, and they're tremendously successful. So it's always good to have him around. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't actually meet him until the premiere. And what about in terms of this movie? How much creative control do you have over the character the of Dawson? Ultimate. Yeah, I, yeah, no one, no one vetoes me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he should play rap records. Um, but I mean, but, uh, you know, can you go in and, and kind of, you know, because you are the same age as this character, there's a, you know, there are similarities in terms of obviously not depth of character, but that, you know, you are putting your mark on this character. Is it on the page and is it perfect? Or do you kind of feel, hang on, I feel he would do this or I feel he would say that? Yeah, you have some, some creative latitude with the director and, the, and, and Nicholas and the, the, the screenwriter and, and uh, uh, they want you to be comfortable and they want you to feel like it's right for you. And that, like you said, you're putting your sort of creative stamp on it. I mean, that said, when you when you gravitate towards a good script or an interesting story, most of the work's done for you, and you, you wouldn't want to go in and just completely change it. You know, change it all. You're 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 wanting to pursue that project for for specific reasons that are on the page already. Um, but that said, yeah, you when you sometimes when you read a scene, it's one thing, and you see it in your head, it's one thing, and then you get it up on its feet, and you you're now opposite Michelle Monaghan doing the scene with the director Michael, and and it's different in some instances, or something feels false. Um, he's very open to changing. You know, the great thing about you know shooting films is that and not being up on stage like like now is that you're going to see my mistakes now. Um, but if you make a mistake or something feels false in a film, you know you just you cut it out or you do another take or another take or another take, just trying different things. So great directors will always allow you to have a little bit of creative freedom to mess around with the character and maybe change a bit of dialogue here and there to make it feel organic and real. Um, there's a, a love scene in this movie and I saw Michelle talking about this. Uh, I don't know if you want to elaborate, but, but am I right in thinking that this went on for quite a while? <laughs> I'm just, I mean, I mean, did she tell you? Hey, it's did Michelle Monaghan, right? You? I would go with it. I would be like, don't cut, for the love of God, don't cut. I'm still going. Um, well... <laughs> Please edit that. Please, for the luck, please edit that. Get out more. Um, she. <laughs> Do you know my wife? Um, don't answer that either. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Um, she, uh, did she mention how long that takes? No, it doesn't less. matter. Okay. Oh, well, um, oh sorry. I thought, she, thought we were going in a different no, direction the take, there. The take, the take. Yeah. The take. Uh, no, uh, she didn't. I just read that, that no one kel uh, yelled cut for quite some time. Yeah, there was a, there was a, a, a pretty uh, intimate love scene in the movie and... and it was, it was beautifully lit, and we were in this old uh, abandoned cottage in the bayou in New Orleans. It was very romantic. It was a beautiful magnolia trees and Spanish moss hanging down, and we were kind of all sweaty. <laughs> and uh, and um, one thing about digital, you know, we, obviously movies now are being shot much, much more on digital nowadays than film. It's very rare to shoot a, a film with film, actually, nowadays. And with film, you would shoot for about like one mag, which is like the, you know, the, the, the mag that you put on top of the camera that carries the film, will last about four or five minutes. With digital, you can go on for like 15 minutes without, without changing the card in the camera. So the director was like, all right, action. You know, we take each other's clothes off and get into bed and, and went on for 13 minutes, I think. Um, I want to shake your hand, buddy, because that's amazing. Well done. Is, <laughs> Which is, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say that's really representative of, uh, that, that's, <laughs> that's the magic of movies. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting graphic. Uh, I, th I yeah, think so 13 minutes finished. is perfect time. I didn't it see a problem. It like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I wasn't going to yell cut. It was, it was me and Michelle. It was great. Well, uh, yeah. I mean, I think this so is gross. a perfect time to move on. Um, 
it is. I mean, a movie I like this rests on the chemistry between the two of you. It really does. And b before we talk more on that chemistry, let's take a quick look. This is the scene in the movie where you guys have dinner uh, after your first meeting after 20 years of being apart. Take a look at this. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't you have gotten <laughs> bald or fat or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> soon, soon enough. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can obviously see from that clip the chemistry, and we were saying about a movie like this really does rest on the chemistry. You know, this is this is what will make the movie work or not. You can have the best script in the world, but if you two guys, you know, can't bring that to the screen, it it, it, it won't work. Did you feel a pressure from that? I didn't necessarily feel the pressure of it. I mean, this is a unique one of the the, the success stories of the Nicholas Sparks movies was The Notebook, and and undeniably the chemistry between Ryan Adam, uh, Ryan Adams. Rachel McAdams and Ryan Gosling. Was that would have been a just, very different you know, film, wouldn't you know, it? <laughs> Ryan Adams. That would have changed the summer of 69, I can tell you. <laughs> ah, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> uh, was that, you know, you see them on, on screen and it's like they're, they're both on fire. It's like they're, they're yelling at each other and screaming and, you know, and laughing with one another and laying in the street. And, you know, we all want to see all of that. Um, so, yeah, that, that was the prototypical there I mean that's that's the chemistry that you want to shoot for um, the scene you just showed was it's a really delicate scene in that when they come back together after 20 years there's been a lot of damage done um, f feelings hurt and not betrayal so much as just uh, she felt I don't want to ruin it for you but um, but it's a very there's a lot of careful dynamic be between the two characters here and this is one of the first moments where you see them sort of opening up just a little bit um, and this is just the beginning of it. And then they end up relaxing even more than what you just saw, and, and there's even more chemistry. <laughs> so I didn't want you to think that that was the extent of the chemistry, <laughs> basically. Um, we so they're being very careful already. with one another because there's That's been a lot of pain, and you know. But uh, but yeah, we we were allowed in that scene to kind of improv a little bit here and there, and just kind of have fun with that. I think the chemistry between you two is, is incredible, and, and the same with the, the younger pairing of you guys as well. I think that was really important. Did you give advice to them, uh, the younger characters playing your younger selves, if you like, the, the actors, to try and be, you know, your mannerisms, the way you would deliver the yeah. role as Dawson? Yeah, um, not so much advice, just judgment. I would, <laughs> I would just see Luke and go, I wouldn't do that. Uh, <laughs> Don't be better than <laughs> yeah, me, Luke. No. <laughs> you just work on your American accent, Yazi. <laughs> Um, no, Lucas, he's fantastic. I mean, obviously, we don't look, you know, like carbon copies of one another, clearly. But um, but the director was like, you guys have a similar sort of warmth or what, you know, whatever. And uh, um, but yeah, Luke and I got together just mainly to talk about the accent that we sound like the same person. Um, having grown up in the South, the character is kind of a Southern American, and um, and Luke, who's got a brilliant ear for for accent and dialect he um he caught on really quick and and uh so i didn't have to do i didn't have to do too much actually because i'm kind of a redneck anyway i'm from oklahoma and i was like oh i can do that um <laughs> but luke had to kind of take on my accent and we just had a couple of like gestures and mannerisms that we sort of aped each other on you know but we didn't get too hung up on that either it was like i wanted him to have the freedom to to kind of create his character as he would and me to do mine i mean you do change a lot after 20 years anyway so um, but yeah, but uh, that was that was helpful. N not often do you have the time to rehearse on a film, and we had a good two weeks of rehearsals to get the scenes up and up and running, and you know get to know each other. Yeah. Um, shall we open it up to the you guys? Would you uh, like to ask James a question? You can't just be, "Will you marry me?" It's not going to work. But let's <laughs> let's get the microphone to that lovely lady over there. Can we pass the mic along? Hi. What's your question? Uh, first of all, James, I just I don't want to be too spoilerish, but I just want to say it was really great seeing you unexpectedly at a movie recently. What? Oh yeah, wait. Uh, I was I was yeah, in the movie or at yeah, the movie? Yeah, you were in the movie. Oh okay. Yeah. I, maybe it was there too. Well, I <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't want to ruin the end of the movie. Oh, oh 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 okay okay. <laughs> no, anyone, I thought you just saw. I think it. everyone's already seen it, but just in case. Oh okay, gotcha. Yeah, you know. Okay. Oh, I think we spoiled that movie earlier, my darling. I, I, hey, you know. dude lives. There you go. <laughs> okay, so my question is, uh, whenever you're doing a movie that's based on a book, do you feel very um, that it's very important for you to read the book and before you actually um, start shooting the movie, or you do like to separate things? Yeah, if it's if it's a if it's a book like a Nicholas Sparks book or any book for that matter, to, to me, if you're doing a, an adaptation of a of a novel of a book, I think it's always important to read it. You know. <laughs> um, 
the director was a little like you can read it if you want it's it's there's some things that are in it that are not in our film um so i think he he was a little cautious about us you know immersing ourselves in and in, in the book so much in that we might come away with ideas and sometimes actors with ideas is not a good thing uh so he was afraid that we would come back and say where's that scene where i was you know you know doing a stunt off the whatever um but uh, so I did read the book, and and it's you know it's a tremendous work. But you you can sort of go in and see, um, you know where our screenplay came from. But I don't think it's imperative that you that you, that you read them. I just prefer to because I feel like it's you know out of respect to the the author and everything. So um, the, we may as well go to the lady right next to her who's had her hand up for a while as well. Hi, my question is about the movie Enchanted. What appealed to you um, to the character of Prince Edward? Uh, thank you. That's <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> um, by the way, I just, I'm so slow today. I just realized the movie you're talking about. I was like, what movie oh, by telling me that I'm in are you ruining the ending? I mean, you, ah, you know the one with the okay, Forgive me. Forgive me. Um, yeah, so Enchanted. Enchanted came uh, my way and it was... Um, it was really just to, yeah, it was to play the, the prince, and I had to audition, and, I, and Amy did as well, and, and neither of us were um, asked to sing, actually, and, and Amy and I uh, um, both come from th musical theater backgrounds, and we, <laughs> li like bold you know, uh, actors and stage-starved actors do, it's like, hey, we can sing too, and uh, it's like, oh, can you really? Like yeah, let, 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 so they go, okay, well, we'll try you, you know, singing the song, and if you suck, we'll just replace you with somebody else. Um, so we actually ended up getting to do the singing ourselves, but but that came along. It was like I loved the conceit of the movie. I loved the. It was very ambitious. It was Disney, sort of sending itself up in a in a in a playful way. And it was the feeling was this movie is either going to really work or it's going to be terrible. <laughs> um, and the and that was never more obvious to me on the first than the first day where we were I was on a bus in tights, uh, with pu big puffy sleeves and a sword and. A bunch of like tourists in in Times Square looking at me like, "What the hell are you doing?" Like, he's really jumping the shark, uh, <laughs> and I was like, "This is, <laughs> I hope this works." Um, but me and Amy and Timothy Spall, the br uh, brilliant um, English actor who played my valet in the movie, were just sort of st it was like the feeling of standing on a ledge, going, "All right, you're gonna jump. I'm gonna, I'll jump if you jump," and you have to commit yourself to a movie like that and. And we all did, and, and it just worked out. So it was a joy to work on, and the music was, the score was brilliant. And um, those are the types of roles that don't come around that often. It's just, you know, you just, you read it and go, I know how to do this. Please let me do it. Um, and they let me do it, so it, it all worked out. That's a great film. Uh, we have a lady at the front here. Oh, God, I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, am I. <laughs> I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many questions can I get? As many as you want. <laughs> I mean, how many do you have? So many. Oh. Um, <laughs> could we pick the best one? And if it's really good, I'm going to steal it for the next time he's here. Uh, could you uh, wear open um, essence and like Twitter or Instagram's account for fans to follow or interact? Um, I'm. <laughs> my son's over here looking at me like. He, he, he knows that uh, I, I'm not on Instagram, I'm not on Twitter, I'm not on Facebook, and um, unfortunately there's a lot of like fake sites out there that are not really me. Um, I'm, I'm really behind the times. Uh, and I'm, eventually I'm sure I will probably have a social media page, but right now it's like, I'm just a little apprehensive about it just because of like, um, I don't know, I, just protecting privacy, things like that, you know, but... Um, but I do want to find a way to reach out to the fans and speak to them and, and connect with them. And I think that's really the best way to do it. Um, other than coming to an Apple store in London and speaking to you personally, which I'd rather do anyway, just face to face. Uh, but right now I don't have a, a, a social media account. Which is really annoying because I've been friends with you for three years, man. <laughs> <laughs> we were hanging uh, out later. It's going to oh, be awkward. Oh, quick, funny story. Just quick. Um, so Michelle Monaghan, who plays the, you know, Amanda in the movie, she... Just uh, just recently signed up for Instagram or Twitter or something, and um, she's like, "I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it." And she's like, "I love it." And immediately, what happens is everybody ends up loving it right away. And we showed up on set one day, and she goes, "Oh, um, you're doing really good with your." I said, "I might do it too," but I didn't do it. She showed up on set, and she goes, "Oh, you're doing really good with your site." 
I said, what site? She goes, oh, your, your Instagram. You, 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 you messaged me. <laughs> about, and saying, how am I doing with my new site? There were like pictures of you from your childhood. And I said, uh-uh. She goes, that wasn't you? So <laughs> it's just the idea that someone could create a site and then reach out to a friend, a co-star, and she's like responding to him going, yeah, Jimmy, you're doing a great job. It's great. You had fun. Maybe just, maybe not so creepy. Just to, you know, Anyway, she goes, I can't believe I was having a conversation with this guy and it wasn't you. That, to me, that kind of scares me a little bit. Anyway, just a, just a little side tangent story. Next question. Let's, let's give it to, to one. We have time for one more question. We have a gentleman at the back there. Should we, should we go to you, sir? Thank you. Uh, James, in a movie which uh, you played, in which you played for six years ago, uh, Sex Drive, you have a, a great passion. That's what, that was the first movie of yours, of yours, by the way. Well, that's a good one to start with. Yeah, it's, it's a really good one. <laughs> it's a really good one. It doesn't get any better than that. <laughs> <laughs> so you had a great passion for that car, GTO 69. You were crazy about it. Uh, about the GTO? Yeah. Yeah, so, 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 yeah. so the question is, uh, in real life, uh, what, is, what is the car that you have a really great passion for? The car I have a great passion for? In real life. In real life. So he's mentioning a movie I did called Sex Drive, which is a, a, a pretty uh, under, undervalued comedy. That I, I, I'm not one to get up here and like toot my own horn, but that <laughs> few people have seen the movie, and it's actually pretty funny. Uh, but I, I, I drive this 1969 GTO in the movie, and it's my, you know, it's my, my pride and joy. Um, my favorite, you know, actually, my son, and I keep pointing to my son, I'm just going to embarrass him. One of our favorite things we did on Sunday was walk around in Knightsbridge and go up and down, like, car window shopping and to, like, the McLaren dealership and Pagani. And, and so he's, we're both car fanatics, big gearheads. Um, but I would say my, my ultimate car would probably be, it would probably be a Ferrari Italia. Yeah. Is it the 458, Jack? Okay, yeah. <laughs> he, know, he knows better than I do. That would be that would be the ultimate for me. You're not having one. It's, it's, it's the insurance, buddy. You can get the you a little battery-operated one. <laughs> Dad is not so cool now, is he? <laughs> um, like we have run out of time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you I'm so, so much. I'm so sorry. I knew you had more in. questions. I just ended the up talking is, through all of it. She had more questions than I did, which was really worrying. So, um, please, ladies and gentlemen, will you thank me? The movie is out in just a couple of weeks' time. You should go see it. It's, an, it's a stunning piece of work. You will need tissues. I cried twice. I'm not afraid to admit it. It's absolutely f a phenomenal piece of work. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you will, thank me. And James Marsden. Thank you all for coming out for this. Man. I appreciate it.